And Vimal, it's, it's great to speak with you. This is uh, first earnings with you at the helm uh, as CEO since you took over in the beginning of June. Uh, I do want to jump right into the results specifically, uh, and that is the fact that you raised the lower end of guidance for the full year, both for sales and earnings, but it's really uh, the current quarter and expectations there that analysts are pointing to and saying it is putting the stock under pressure. What are you seeing in real time across your portfolio, across end markets, across the world right now? So I would start with saying uh, we, we printed pretty good results for uh, for Q2. We were on the upper end of our guidance for EPS at 2.23. Our upper end of guide was 2.25. Very strong cash flow, free cash flow up 34%. Our backlog is up 5%, and we raised our guide for full year. So we are pretty pleased with the results. Looking ahead, I would say uh, we feel pretty good about 23 and look ahead for 24. Our end markets are pretty strong, aerospace and energy. And there's no reason we are going to perform pretty well for the rest of the year and, and the times to come. So what does that mean in terms of the macroeconomic landscape right now? I do want to get into some of these uh, areas like aerospace more specifically, but more broadly, what are you seeing, given the fact that we're less than 24 hours off of a, a Fed rate decision? We just had the ECB this morning, and uh, there's a lot of talk about the possibility of a soft landing. So we, we see two parts of Honeywell. At one hand, our long cycle businesses are performing extremely well. Uh, our aerospace business, like and most of the other companies in that segment, have very strong double digit growth. Uh, our energy business, uh, our business energy segments are performing extremely well. Where we see, uh, you know, recovery required is in the short cycle. There's a portion of our business which is linked to economy to the short cycle. The orders have stabilized there now, and we are hoping. Uh, things turn better in the next few months ahead. Interesting. Uh, in terms of the long cycle, uh, aerospace, of, cor of course, is part of that piece of the puzzle. Organic sales up 16 percent last quarter. Uh, right. Strength in particularly aftermarket, it would seem, and the commercial aerospace um, yes. part of that business, but also seeing some uh, acceleration, if you will, of sales in, in defense. I guess walk me through how strong aerospace is right now and, and, and how far we have to go in terms of this growth? So aerospace growth is here for a long time. I think that's a punchline here. Uh, the constraint here was more around supply chain. They're increasingly getting relieved every quarter. Uh, our volumes were up 20% in quarter one, 20% in quarter two. And we expect that trend to continue and maintain a strong growth for 2023 and uh, 2024. So runway for aerospace growth for Honeywell for, and many of our other companies in this sector is here for a long time. Okay. Um, automation equipment, you sell it to warehouses, you sell it into the industrial sector. That's been an area of, of softness, of weakness. Going back to the short cycle parts of the business, is this an area where you are seeing stabilization? Yeah, so certainly in automation, we have automation into three sectors in process uh, automation, building automation, and in warehouse, where we've seen softness since last year has been warehouse automation. There was overbuilt during 2020, 2021, and it's more like settling at the trough right now. Uh, our pipeline for the new opportunities in warehouse automation remains pretty strong, and we expect uh, that that turn into orders for later half of the year and turn into strong performance for us in uh, 2024. But if I take an overarching automation theme for Honeywell, uh, we are doing the whole business in uh, process, in buildings, they are doing extremely well. And the theme of automation is here to stay for several years to come, and we remain pretty bullish on that.